In the previous video in this series, we have talked about the basic idea behind RAID or redundant arrays and as I have explained, the main idea is really really simple. Instead of a single disk being attached to a single disk I.O. port, as it would be done in a traditional personal computer, we can just simply use multiple disks in the same time attached to the same motherboard or the same RAID controller, we then need to use a somewhat more specialized logic which is then responsible for distributing the I.O. coming from the motherboard and then distributing it over these multiple disks. In today's video we will focus on the logic behind RAID level 0 the number here is actually mostly representative of the timeline of how these different RAID levels have been introduced and not surprisingly, of course, everyone always wanted to have more and more speed and this is why the RAID level 0 was one of the very first RAID levels which have been ever implemented and used. To illustrate what is really going on on a very very low bit level, here we gonna use a single byte of information which is constituting of 8 individual bits. I have to clearly point out to you that in reality we are not really able to write individual bits or even individual bytes into one of these disks and this is due to the inherent physical structure of how one of these hard disks is being then put together. Namely inside the hard disks if you would open them you're gonna find multiple of these round platters where you have these individual round disks and by the factory the surface area of these round disks is actually being sliced up into these concentric circles what you see here and the concentric circles are called the tracks. In addition to having these tracks as circles, the factory is also slicing up even the individual circles. These small slices here are the so-called sectors and between the sectors there is actually a small gap. The functionality of this gap is to signalize to the read write head when it crosses from one of these sectors to the other, then it just simply crosses one of these gaps and now comes something which uh, might surprise some of you, namely that the sector size is a 512 byte size and that is just due to the reason that the very first IBM PCs which have been made they came with floppy disks where the sector size was normally set to 512 byte. This means that they had to do everything on this floppy disk 512 byte sector size then also when they actually released IBM PCs with a hard disk. So this is just pure pure legacy and compatibility. Actually in about 2008 to 2010 the manufacturers have changed the sector size. They went from 512 to 4K. This just means that real disks are dealing with larger chunks of data. So these chunks are either 512 or 4096 times larger than what we use here in this video. However, the underlying ideas are still the very same. The only difference is that that by going to this single byte of data since we are humans for us is easier to deal with these smaller numbers for machines is no problem to take 512 times longer than this. Let us then come back to the actual real topic of today's video which is then focusing on RAID. In particular then first of all we are gonna look at RAID 0 and again if you are wondering about the naming in uh, computing 0 is a perfectly valid binary number since this was one of the first which have been actually implemented it was just simply called RAID 0. The main driving force behind making RAID 0 was that universities especially of the time could not really afford to buy really really fast hard disks so they said well can we actually buy a lot of cheap disks somehow bundle them together and make one faster disk out of it so we wanna have more speed which is very typical to every application and this is how they came up with RAID level 0. To increase the sequential read and sequential write speed 
what they have done is a really hand waving and obvious solution namely in rate zero you are doing a so-called striping of the data what this striping means is that practically the individual disks just receive a small portion of the data this small portion is then written on the individual disk and through this parallelization as you imagine the individual sequential read and sequential write speeds of the disks just simply add up and this way we reach this higher speed to explain how this data striping is then taking place in the case of rate zero we're gonna then use here this one byte of information so we have this incoming data and we just write small portions in the individual disks so this means we write the first zero to the first disk the second zero goes to disk b or the second disk and this one here then goes to the third disk and since every disk is writing only a single bit this means that they can do this operation a lot faster and this is how their speed is then adding up as i will show you also the capacity of this disk is uh, gonna add up nevertheless let us then continue with this one byte of information after we have written out the first three bits of information then we write the next one here in disk a and then we just proceed forward with the other bits so here we write this one the zero finally we just write this zero here in disk a this one here in disk b now since we are just having this example with three disks it means that the next incoming byte the first bit of that this is just an x because i don't know what that will be that will be written in the disk c as you can see through the striping of the data the disks are then sharing the load among them they are also then adding up their capacity so we have pumped in at the end of the day nine bits and as you see the individual disks only hold three bits and this is how we then gain a considerable sequential read and sequential write speed as i have explained we just simply add up the capacity of the individual disks and this way the total disk capacity of a rate zero array is as many times as larger as the smallest disk in the array in fact the more modern controllers are able to treat larger disks such that they just send as an example let us say this disk here is twice larger than these other two if the rate controller here the logic is smart enough then it will just put twice the number of bits into this disk and this way we are not even losing any of the total disk capacity as i have mentioned the disk capacity then in case of the rate zero practically adds up and in addition to this also the individual disk speed is being added up and this is one of the main take-home messages what you need to learn about rate zero practically we are adding up the disk speed and the disk capacity this way we reach the higher sequential read and sequential write throughput in the case of rate zero and this is one of the main advantages of rate zero since multimedia applications like video editing especially in 4k or even gaming as an example to decrease the load time then it is indeed a good idea to use a RAID 0 system now RAID 0 have also its disadvantages namely it's like a car you know when you are driving fast and furious everything is looking great at least in an action movie however when things crash then of course things turn out to be horribly bad and that's also the case for RAID 0 let us suppose that one of the disks in this case disk C fails for whatever reasons now let us look at how is now our data doing can we actually read our data well then so we know that we put the first three bits on the three disks so we can read back the first zero the second zero and hopla here right away we have an issue on disk c we have no idea what kind of bit was there and of course we can go over the full array and after we do that as you see we simply do not have and i have to emphasize this we do not have any kind of way to actually 
actually restore or to read the data and that is because we do not have any type of logic of what should be the bit on this disk which is failed. So long story short, if any, and I have to point this out, if any of the disks in a RAID 0 array fails, practically your data is completely hosed, is unusable, it's gone. This means that even though we have gained a lot of sequential read and sequential write speed, we are also losing, we are sacrificing the data security because if any of the disk fails, our data is gone. So this is why in the industry at least pure RAID 0 is really really rarely used if ever. Let us also mention something which is also very important and that is related to the so called mean time between failure. Let us suppose that there is a mean time between failure measured by the manufacturer and the manufacturer knows that even if everything is perfect a disk will fail in average once in 10 years let's say just as a ballpark. So now this means that if you have a single disk and you have it for 10 years there is a high chance that it might just go bad. Now let us make a little bit of finger mathematics here. So now if we have a RAID 0 array built out of the three disks what would be the mean time between failure of this RAID 0 array? So if a single disk can do 10 years then if we would have two disks and if any of them fails the whole data is hosed so that means the mean time between failure would be actually only five years and if we include a third disk then this drops down to only three years and that is because the chance of any of the disks are going bad is also adding up just as their capacity and their speed have added up which is again a negative point of the RAID 0 array. This is why RAID 0 is most of the time used in applications where it is not really mission critical to have now the higher data security. So as an example you can have a backup of your original video source files and when you are working on it like as an example doing an editing then you need as fast as possible access to the files and even if once a year as an example your RAID 0 array fails you don't care about it simply because you can just restore the data what you have worked on and if something goes bad you say well okay we knew that RAID 0 is dangerous we just replace the disk and we just recover the data from an existing backup. And this is highly important to know that in case of a RAID doesn't actually matter what type of RAID we are talking about. It is super super important that you do have backups of your data. It doesn't matter what kind of RAID level it is. It is not a backup just because you have multiple disks it doesn't mean that your data is more secure than if it would be on a single disk. Even if you would have a RAID 1 array which we are gonna talk about in the next slides even in that case if you issue a bad command or you just yeah you just push the delete button on something and you realize five minutes later that oh wait a moment I would have needed all the data well all the data is gone I have to really drive this home companies they keep both an on-site backup of their data often they do this backup on a daily or on a weekly fashion and in addition to this they also often keep actually a completely off-site backup and that is because if there is a catastrophic as an example the building burns down <laughs> it does happen sadly it, it does happen the water pipe bursts and everything is literally goes underwater or your backup might be also hit by this disaster and in order to have some type of disaster recovery you actually outsource this thing in a company or in a off-site facility which is hopefully far away so that there is a way to restore the data for a company most of the time their hardware and their gear is 
barely worth something compared to the software and compared to the data what they have. A company lives on the data what they generate and what they own. This is why in an industrial environment or in a company, instead of RAID 0, you most often deal with some sort of RAID 1 or derivatives of RAID 1 mirroring, which we're gonna talk about in the upcoming slides. However, before we do that, let us then really drive home the main advantages and the main disadvantages of RAID 0 as a short overview. Let us first focus on the positive advantages of RAID 0. As I have showed you, if we use RAID 0, we definitely get a considerably faster sequential read and write speed because the read write speed of the individual disks adds up and also the storage capacity of the individual disks is being added up. So far we have not looked at the actual implementation of RAID in general and this implementation is completely out of the scope of the current video. It will be the topic of the upcoming video in this series. Nevertheless, we can still mention at this stage, and I will leave it at that, that considering that in the case of RAID 0, we are just sharing the load, meaning that we are not really doing a really, really complex logical operation because we are just simply distributing the bits among the different disks. Now this means that we can use a software RAID. This is also a advantage that due to this simplified logic, we can just use software instead of putting our money into relatively expensive hardware RAID controllers. In addition to this, as I already mentioned to you, in the case of RAID 0, if the controller is relatively smart, it can actually take care of disks having different sizes. After we have looked at the nice sunny side of RAID 0, it's time to look at the dark side of course. And as I already pointed to you out several times, the main showstopper of RAID 0 is that there is absolutely no redundancy. In fact, the mean time between failure is severely reduced using RAID 0 because if any of the disk fails, all the data is lost forever and ever if there is no backup copy. Talking about mean time between failure, I have also explained that if you use a RAID 0 array, then actually your mean time between failure is smaller than using a single disk. And this is again an important message what you need to know because this is really really counterintuitive when people hear about RAID and especially when they think about the word redundant, they always assume that the given RAID array will have a higher data security than a single disk. And I have clearly pointed out to you that in the case of RAID 0, and also I will show you later that in the case of RAID 5, this is not the case. Another small disadvantage of RAID 0 is that the random read write is not really improved. As you remember, in the case of RAID 0, we are simply just distributing the bits among the disks and this now means that whenever we want to do a read or write operation, we actually have to do this read and write operation across the whole disks. This means that we cannot just write to a single disk to modify a file. Similarly, if we want to read a file, we again have to go through all the disks. And this clearly means that when it comes to random I.O., the RAID 0 is not better than having a single disk.